everybody, welcome back to Art Shop with John Ross Palmer here in his beautiful studio and, and uh, gallery space here in the Heights Boulevard in Houston, Texas. Hi, John, how are you doing? I'm good, John Bishop, how are you? I'm doing grand, thank you very much. Beautiful weather in Houston. Yeah, I mean, very it's December, it should be beautiful, right? Yeah, but you never know. I mean, we know. had a, a bit of a cold snap in the sense that it got into the 50s. And every leaf fell off the tree. Yeah. Every leaf fell this weekend. <laughs> and it, it's like you're going to give up, but then all of a sudden I'm afraid if I don't blow the leaves off, there's going to be like one rock. It's, and yeah, then exactly. there goes somebody on the ground. Exactly. So keep yeah. it under control. Well, wonderful. I, I thought maybe today we would talk a little bit because it is the end of the year, getting close to the holidays, whatever it is you're celebrating, and, and talk a little bit about that kind of process at the end of the year do you do a lot of reflection mm -hmm. uh, not only personally but you know as far as your art business so what i do think is really great about uh, a benchmark in your life whether mm -hmm. it's a birthday or some people could be easter or some other religious pretty, holiday pretty arbitrary isn't it? yeah whatever um makes you stop and reflect a little bit and what's really great about the new year mm -hmm. for this part of the world i know Asia has different new year, but I mean, Absolutely. for us, um, it's a time to say, okay, what has happened in this last 365 days sure. or whatever you're at and what do you want to get better about? So it's a good point for me to say, okay, what went well this year? Mm -hmm. What did not go well? What do I want to cut out? What do I want to focus on more? Um, because also it's a financial ending too for yeah, most people. Yes, yeah, most Which, people have that yeah. end of the year. <laughs> so it's just a good point to stop and look around and see how your life is and evaluate it. I don't believe in New Year's resolutions as no, that. No, I never do them because mm. I mean, I mean, you set yourself up. <laughs> you set yourself up, you know, so. Work but on, I do think it's healthy to think about it, right? Yeah, I mean, and, and make changes. time well spent. Yeah, but don't yeah. all of a sudden go, okay, I'm gonna gorge on food for yeah. December. And guess what, man? January 1st, I'm dieting. It never works. And then you right. put the weight on and you don't lose it. Right. Because you go from being fat and happy to being miserable. Mm -hmm. You know, so you anything in life, you can't, like, say you want to become a full-time artist. Mm -hmm. Chances are you can't just do it one day. You've got to, like, ease it into your life. Right. To make and, it make sense. And, and very often, I mean, if you're going to do a big kind of uh, health kick or a, a, a weight loss plan, you, you, you look to professionals. You look to people who can help with that process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and in that sense, I guess uh, this would be a good time for people who are considering coaching. Sure. This might be a good time for them to oh, start that's a very good, that. That's, you, know? you know what? Very good point. Yeah. So yeah, this is the time to think, okay, in my art, what do I want to accomplish this year? Mm -hmm. What have I had on my list of the career milestones that I've not done? Um, what do I really I know how to kind of get started? Yeah, this is a good time mm -hmm. because when I work with somebody on the coaching, I want them to come with all their situations. Sure. And I know I can help them with it. And it's never going to be the right moment to say, okay, today's the day I'm going to sacrifice time, money to put into an art career. You just have to do it mm -hmm. and make it happen with a decision. And once you make the real decision, everything else is going to fall into play. But yeah, that's a good point about the end of the year for people's career, things you want yeah, to change. Yeah, I mean, because if you are going to make a change and, and you know that the end of the year is when you're going to evaluate whether or not you've been successful, right. start now. Start you know? now, yeah. Plan to get Start going. at yeah. the beginning of the year mm -hmm. and, and then you've got a, a distinct period of time with which to measure. And another thing I think that's really special about January mm -hmm. is everybody's partied out, you know. <laughs> Hopefully, if you're a good, if you're a good, whatever, you party it out. Yeah, get it and, out of your system. And then January comes along, and people are kind of lethargic, not really doing all a lot. Yeah. So I always use that as a very important month for me mm -hmm. because I know things are not really happening for a lot of people. So then I want to even go out and do more. Yeah. Because more things can happen during that month. Mm -hmm. So this is a time to really start something new in January when everybody's um, distracted, recovering, whatever it may be from all the holiday events. If you're clear-minded and focused during that month, you're going to gain a lot more ground mm -hmm. than maybe in June or especially like August of the year. So if, if you were working with a new client in a coaching situation, would you give them like a trajectory over a year? Would you give them a homework? Did you set up... Are there certain milestones or do you work that individually with the clients? So very good because what is, so I, in the past I've done mentorship. Sure. And that still will be a part of what I will do. But with the coaching, so the mentorship was a program. Yep. 
you sign up for the program and you got to do. You either get in or you don't. Yeah, you you better do what you got to do in the program yeah. because you're in this. You got jurored into this program. Yeah. When it's the coaching, it's going to be catered to what is the best for you. Mm -hmm. Some people might love deadlines to get things done. Some people might think that's overwhelming and causes too much anxiety, so they don't mm -hmm. want a deadline. Some people, depending on their work, they can't meet at 6 p.m. They oh, can sure. only meet on the yeah. weekends or maybe mm -hmm. before work at 7 a.m. So what's great about this one-on-one is I'm able to meet with them at wherever they are to help them get started there to go to the next place. Mm -hmm. So it's not a textbook type um, learning. Right. It's not rote. It's not. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a boilerplate. No. For everyone, right? No. Yeah. It, it's well. That's good. Yeah. People... Come as you are, and let's see what you want to do, and mm -hmm. let's make some goals, and let's see the goals be accomplished. Uh huh. Because I'm not somebody that's sitting here talking about making a career happen and grow. I'm doing it doing every it. day. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you can see what I'm doing that's working, and see how that can tie into you. You know, you never want to, I don't, I never wanted to become successful because I came like, became like somebody else that was successful. Right. But I wanted to learn some of the things that person's doing that's making it work and then tie it into my bag of tricks, mix it up and kind of see how I can have my own path to that place. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I do when I coach with Artist 101. You know, one of the things I've often thought since I've gone into, you know, an art career full time is that it's, it's hard to measure success if you're using somebody else's ruler, mm -hmm. uh, that when, when you look at business models and, and business advice and things like that, it doesn't always translate mm -hmm. precisely to what we're doing as, as creatives. Mm -hmm. And maybe success looks a little different for us. And, and I think it behooves us, particularly if you've if you got a period of time that you're looking at, if it's the start of the new year, you know, what does success look like for a creative? Mm -hmm. and, how will you judge your success? Maybe it's maybe it's not money. I mean, I, I certainly hope it's money. Yeah, yeah, money is <laughs> But maybe that's not the, the, mm -hmm. the right measure, and that might be different for most of us, sure. depending upon where we are in our careers and things yeah. like that. Um, so, first of all, if money is anybody's goal, the sad thing is they'll never have enough. Yeah, I figured that. And once they have a certain amount, they have more anxiety in their life about losing it. And they, they have more expenses. And that more exposure yeah. and, you know, mm -hmm. more, you know, so um, money is a part of life and we, if we don't have it, we don't participate in the system. But something you touched on wrong, you started this question mm -hmm. that is very important and I would, I would relate it to um, compare and contrast with people uh -huh. about the ruler and stuff. One thing that's hard to not do, which we all do it, even though I'm very aware of it, I still do it, is you don't ever compare yourself to somebody else. Right. Because you don't know what they're life situation is you might see them as this very successful whatever you want to be and you're like they're successful because of this if i had that upbringing or if my parent didn't do this or mm -hmm. if i went to that school or or a whole list of different things right whenever we do that we're always getting our biggest weakness and we're comparing it to somebody else's biggest strength sure so we always lose in that mm -hmm. so to be aware of that because you want to learn from people but don't feel like you can't do it because of a situation that you're in. Right. Everybody right. has or that, things or, or that, that you are somehow inadequate because you don't have the same advantages or talent or experience or whatever yeah. that somebody you're comparing yourself to. And, and so I think what's been hard with the mentorship getting around some of the artist's head is, you know, well, I can't be like you. And I'm like, well, don't be like me. Right. Be the best you. And, um, use somebody like me to teach you about sales or how to keep growing your career, what are important things to focus on, but you don't have to instill that into your character. Right. You know, like Henry Ford or somebody successful said at one point, somebody asked him some, and like, what is this times this, or what is this very um, intelligent type question? And he said, why would I waste my, oh, or Einstein, somebody big. Yeah, yeah. Why would I waste my brain holding facts when I can find somebody in two seconds to give me that answer. Right, right. I'm focused on dreams, mm -hmm. on making things happen. I don't need to worry about those detailed things. I need to know they need to be addressed, but I need to find a CPA that's excellent at counting the money. Mm -hmm. I need to find an attorney when I need help that is excellent at what they do, that they're obsessed with being an attorney like I am an artist. Right. I want to go to the dentist that is obsessed with teeth because I want them to be really good at what they do. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a strength, you will find it, but Absolutely. you're never going to find it when you're sitting in your little garage or studio mm -hmm. saying why it won't work. Right. Make some art 
and things happen. Even if you just make some new panties, it's because you're excited about it and you start talking about it and then you start growing. But if you don't start planning that now, you're never going to get to the point where you have a support system that helps you more. I just had a, a client, a, a collector, mo mostly buys Bogdan's things, and he came to me and he said, I really don't get abstraction. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was like, it's okay, you mm -hmm. know, first of all. Second of all, what's not to get? You know, mm -hmm. you, you bring what... So anyway, we've had several conversations. Son of a gun, he came in Saturday and bought two large abstract paintings. No, my God, high five. <laughs> I was like, Way to go. what the heck? You're the one who doesn't even like abstraction. So either you really like the paintings or he's been thinking about it and, and, and changing his mind a bit. Uh, so that, that was really exciting. Well, it's because of you. And, and, that, and you. I'm talking about maybe a year ago yeah. we had those conversations. So maybe it's taken him that much time to put his hands around it. And say, maybe, maybe, maybe there's something there. But yeah. that's magical to me yeah. to hear that. Because um, some artists would be like, then why are you in my studio? Don't exactly. ask me, why there's are you here? Point, there's a point where you say, okay, so what you're actually saying is you don't like my art. Right, instead <laughs> of going, well, you know what? I get it. There's some things I don't like either. So why right. don't you think you get this or like this? And I want to know what you think because it's going to make me a better person. And, and I, did, I didn't harp on it because I didn't want to turn him off because I thought, right, right, right. You don't have Feet to down like the abstract in his throat. Yeah. Maybe my art's not for you. That's perfectly okay. And uh, that's so awesome. Son of a gun, he came back around and bought some art. I so, love that. Uh, I yeah, love it. That was a great you know, news. think about just. Um, how to measure success. Right. That's success because you I, I felt like eyes. a failure a year ago when I was having those conversations thinking, oh my gosh, you for what a, art. For <laughs> 365 days. <laughs> and in fact, I was laying some, some maybe, maybe me, maybe not, but uh, laying some foundation for something to come a year later. And, and related to that, the success is you sold the art. Yeah, you know, yes. but I mean, but if he would have come back and said, "Hey, uh, I like abstract now," it's not as powerful as him coming back and getting his hard-earned money mm -hmm. and exchanging that for the art, because yeah. then you know he really got it, right? Because he wants it. So that's the importance of being able to sell and place your art. It shows you your value, right? So right. if you're an artist that never, then you don't participate in the financial part of the world, which is mm -hmm. such a major part of our world. And if you go to Harvard or you get a good education, or whatever. And you get the job paying, you know, two hundred eighty thousand dollars a year your first year. Are you excited about that or not? Or are you more excited to make fifty thousand a year? Mm -hmm. And it's not because it's about the money, but it's the money gives you flexibility and right. it edifies you. When you're an artist and you sell your art, it says, "Good job. Yeah, you did something good." And, and maybe the measure, the the money is the measure. And the actual success was that I was able to have a conversation with somebody yeah. about art. Maybe that kind of openness to be able to sit down with somebody mm -hmm. and see where they are mm -hmm. and talk to them where they are. Maybe that was the successful mm -hmm. moment. You because, know, and that's why I was saying sometimes it's hard to, to know where to measure things mm -hmm. because, you know, in, in a business transaction, if I'm selling radios, it ain't sold till it's sold. Right. You know, and yeah. all the chit chat I do making uh, sales pitches doesn't count until they buy the room. Absolutely. Are you going to go to your manager and go, I had 55 conversations. They were great. I learned about my family. Or, People know so much about radios now. Right. <laughs> or I did 55 and I sold four. Yeah. Woo. You know, employee of the month. Do you know at one point in the world, what a currency was, was salt. Oh, absolutely. Salt was so rare. That was, that was currency. Yep. I couldn't believe how far things have changed. Now look at salt everywhere. Salt. We got too much salt. Exactly. Um, but it shows you success when you're able to sell your art because then guess what? The money, that energy that you work for, mm -hmm. you get to go on a trip. Yep. You get to share it with people you love because you've been successful mm -hmm. or take them to lunch. So by you being successful in your art, look at the other joy you're able to do that's related you know, directly to you selling your paintings mm -hmm. or whatever your art form is. Marvelous, marvelous. I love that. That's a, I'll never forget that story you just said now about well, a year it was later. Just, it was just so strange. It just came out of nowhere. He showed up, bought not one, but two. That's great. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Let's see. The other thing is, you know, as we get toward the end of the year, uh, do you do your, do you plot out your goals over the year? Do you, 
How, how formal a process is it for you or is it a formal process? It's not a formal process, but what I do do is I use a lot of journals for different projects, mm -hmm. you know, like a composition journal. And I fill them up throughout the year, but I always um, retire the journal wherever it is, even if it's not finished at the end of the year. Uh huh. And then I get all, I start all new ones. Okay. And so that's the way I organize things in my head. I'll, I do Airbnb on rentals. Mm -hmm. So I have a journal that's all Airbnb, Airbnb where I can put the receipts, I can put the expenses. Yep. It's all in that organized and I'll have like sales journal and then I might have a, a random journal that's just about things in my life. Um, so when I'm working on journals, I'll have these specific ones that don't have the random one that's just free thought. Sure. And I'll always have that one out because I'll have ideas, I'll write in that and then I'll do some business stuff so it doesn't get boring for me. And for what you told us in the past, every day you start off with some sort of Ab, organizational yeah, totally. moment to, yeah. to plan your day. So in a sense, you're doing that on an ongoing basis, not, yeah. not periodically as you look at a list of, of kind of wishful thinking that you came up yeah, with. Yeah, no wishful January. thinking around here. <laughs> it's making things happen thinking. So mm -hmm. like, I did my journal this morning. I read the paper. I love reading a paper because you're able to read what you want. Yep. This article is interesting. This, not interesting. So you're not bombarded. And when you look at a news channel today, it's unbelievable. They have like 18 screens with it this, in the screen. Yes. How can we ever think you we can? You just choose your bits of news. <laughs> you don't have a choice to choose. Yeah, it's yeah. told to you. So like, this is my this is my list that I made after mm -hmm. I did mine. And so then I have some things checked off. So yeah. yeah, it just gives me a, since I live where I work, as I said before, yeah. lets me get out of here, come back with a game plan, know things that are a priority mm -hmm. and get things done. Because everybody's different. As we're saying, so um, that system works for me because I've figured it out throughout the years. And for somebody else, it might be doing it all on their phone. Mm -hmm. I would rather write it so I save all these papers, all the journals, so I just yeah, have documentation. That's great history. Yeah. Oh, I have thousands and they, of journals. Yeah. And they open your museum. Those are mm -hmm, mm -hmm. have a whole wing to themselves. Yeah, the library. Uh huh. <laughs> no, I think it's important also about journaling is um, you're able to pull a journal out from a year ago yeah. or whenever, and you're like, man, that. That was the end of the world when that happened to me. Right. And look how fast it went away. And, and it's so much more than just uh, bullet points and, and lists. You, you have the emotions, the, the, the amount of time you spend journaling on it gives also the import of the issue. Uh, it just, it seems like a very, very, I, I used to journal quite a bit. Yeah. I've gotten away from it. I need to get back. You, you do, know? because it's, um, it's one time, since you're a creative artist that mm -hmm. paints and sells, you're able to sell your creativity, but for a lot of people, writing is the only thing they can do kind of creatively yeah. that they don't do anymore. And that's why people sign their name so crazy. That's the only time they're able to do something crazy and nobody can say that's wrong. That's wrong, that's my signature. And one thing my mom taught me um, when we would go on beach trips as a kid, um, she would always journal and she said, one thing that's important to do when you journal is write details down. Mm -hmm. You're able to relive it so much better. So like if you're at the beach, and you see this cute little girl with like a striped bathing suit and she's making a castle with her brother. You know, write those things down because then it's, right. you're able to go back to that moment more and maybe smell the beach. Right. By having just a few details that trigger where you were at that moment. Right. Magnificent. Yeah. Any big plans for, uh, or, or we say you don't, you haven't really done that. Is anything you do have planned for this next year? Any direction you're headed that... Just, it's just so much great stuff is happening and I'm so excited to see these things now manifested that mm -hmm. I've, I've been working on that Excellent. people will see happen. So um, my job I always say is to make people excited. So I have a lot of very exciting things that are happening that will be unveiled as the year goes on. Magnificent. Well, if you guys are, are looking for some opportunity for coaching, uh, John is doing that now. Pom Pom Coach, Coach, Coach. C-O-A-C-H, Go Coach. There you go. Can't beat that. Can't fire me either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, John Bishop. Have a great week. We'll see, see you next week. time. Goodbye. Bye.